Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Coburg for Sunday, July 19th. I hope that you find this service of worship, which we're bringing to you, helpful in your walk of faith as we journey together with God. And I hope that uh, during this time, during the COVID-19 pandemic, and during these summer months, as we are looking to reopen uh, different phases of our society and our common life, that you are finding ways to do so safely, that you're taking care of both your, your mental, your physical, uh, and your spiritual well-being. But let us uh, come together and let us worship God this morning. And let us begin with our responsive call to worship. We gather in the presence of God. We gather to worship and praise. We gather in joy and expectancy. We gather in beauty and wonder. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Speak your word of life to us, O God. Friends, let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, in you we live and move and have our being. You alone have been our help and guide through good times and bad. You alone give us the strength we need to face the challenges around us. You alone will be rest for our bodies and souls. To you we turn for wisdom. In your presence we will find the peace and comfort we long for. Fill us with your spirit in this time of worship. Open our minds and hearts so that we may see as you see, love as you love, and follow your ways for the sake of Christ our Lord. God who sees and knows our innermost thoughts and our thoughtless actions. The truth of our lives is this. We are often impetuous and do not seek your wisdom. We are often stubborn and do not practice mercy. We are often arrogant and do not act with love. We are often anxious and do not trust in you. Forgive who we have been, amend who we are, and direct who we shall be, for the sake of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's join together and sing. The hymn is, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come.
give two passages of scripture from for this morning. Reading first from the Psalms, Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may, I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and, stead and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew's gospel. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and then skipping ahead to 36 through 43. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the weak and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and they said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along the way. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and he went into the house. And as his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us come before God once again in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every spring, as I prepare to go out and get some gardening done, I hear the same refrain repeated. Stop. Wait. Don't rake up the leaves yet. Don't pull those dandelions out yet. The reason? Well, the blanket of dead foliage is protecting the plants that are about to emerge, protecting them from a sudden cold snap that might yet occur. If we remove the dead leftover foliage from the previous season, we may inadvertently cause harm to the garden that we are hoping to enjoy. And if we remove the dandelions, we are removing the first food that the bees need to stay healthy. 
This is the bees and other helpful insects' first source of food in the spring. And we need these insects to remain healthy so that our ecosystem can also be healthy. There's a story about dandelions, and it goes like this. There's a woman who once, she took great pride in her lawn. And one year she found herself with a great crop of dandelions. She tried every method she knew to get rid of them, and still they plagued her. Finally, she wrote to the Department of Agriculture or some such, and she enumerated all the things that she had tried, and she closed her letter with a question, what shall I do now? In due course, the reply came, we suggest you learn to love them. And all of this brings us to the parable that Jesus has for us today, the parable of the weeds among the wheat. This parable, like the parable of the seeds from last week in Matthew's Gospel, it finds Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven. However, these aren't reflections on what heaven is like, but how rather we create that space, how we create the kingdom of heaven in the here and now. And I fully believe that heaven is less a place that we go and more a place that we work in partnership with God to create. The parable is simple. A farmer plants some wheat. However, during the night, the enemy comes and plants weeds amongst the wheat. What is the farmer to do? The servant says, let's gather the weeds before they grow too much. But the farmer says, no, no, no. Because in doing so, you might damage the weed as well. Let them both grow, and at harvest, we will separate them. Now, I don't know if this is what a farmer would actually do or not, whether that be in today's world or during the time of Jesus. But it tells us a story about God, about how God operates in the world. It tells us that God prefers subtlety over direct, dramatic action. Scott Jose writes, apparently God would rather work behind the scenes. Apparently changing people's hearts is a quiet and gracious business more than a noisy and forceful affair. What's more, the growth and spread of this kingdom is going to extend throughout the world, but it may never exist in a pure state. He continues, the weeds do not threaten the wheat, but instead the threat comes from how we react to the weeds. The danger is not being in the presence of sin, but trying to root out all the sin that we see. But that means that the real challenge presented to the church by Matthew 13 is finding the strength to resist the temptation to take matters into our own hands and start yanking up every sinful thing we see every time we see it. As Robert Farrer at Capon points out, when in verse 30, the master tells the servant to just let things be, the Greek word used there is the same word used in the Lord's Prayer and elsewhere for forgiveness. The real challenge presented to the church by Matthew 13 is finding the strength to resist the temptation to take matters into our own hands and start yanking up every sinful thing we see every time we see it. When we correct instead of listening. When we condemn instead of offering grace. When we judge instead of looking into the mirror when we exclude instead of offering love. Professor Holly Heron puts it this way. At first read, 
The parable of the wheat, the weeds among the wheat, appears to describe a them versus us situation, tempting us to fill in who are the evildoers and who are the children of the kingdom, which is, she says, an easy trap in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. A closer read, however, reveals that this is a cautionary tale, as well as one which is intended to offer encouragement. The work that befalls us is to continue to plant good seeds in the soil, recognizing that bad ones will also creep up. Our job isn't to judge. God will handle that aptly. Our job is to offer and extend grace, to ensure the soil is good for planting, and to self-examine to ensure that we ourselves have not turned into weeds. In the context of the parable of the sorry, in the context of the kingdom of heaven, this parable gives us much to reflect upon. Are you the good seeds, or are you the weeds who try to choke out life? Does the judgment offered in this parable make us uncomfortable, fill us with hope, or perhaps A little bit of both. For me, it is a little bit of both. For I know that I have corrected, condemned, judged, and excluded. And I fear that I may do so again. Perhaps intentionally and perhaps accidentally. But I fear I will do so again. And I tremble at that thought. And yet I know that I have also listened, offered grace, self-reflected, and offered love, and that I will again do these things. And that fills me with joy, and that fills me with hope. The reality is that we are often the weeds, just as we are often the wheat. To say that we should pluck out the weeds assumes that we are always behaving as God would have us, and I think that we all know that that is not true. Dorothy Soleil was a German theologian and mystic. She became interested in questions of religion and politics at an early age. She grew up under the Nazi regime and, like many Germans of her generation, never got over the shame of belonging to a nation that willingly collaborated with mass murderers. She was especially worried by the acquiescence of so many people who claimed to be Christian and eventually concluded that part of the explanation was that they had compartmentalized their faith transforming it into a private and otherworldly thing, convinced that such privatization is a perversion of faith. So they worked as a theologian to demonstrate the social responsibility of religion and as an activist to put her theology into practice. This is where I believe this parable calls us into action. It is far too easy to be complacent and allow the weeds and the wheat to grow together. However, there are good, innocent people who suffer because of the weeds in this present time. To say to them, wait until the final harvest, until the final judgment, it will all get sorted out and it will all be all right in the end, isn't right. It further victimizes them, causes further harm. It turns us into weeds as we fail to live out God's justice. In the Beatitudes, Jesus preached for radical change. In his healing and teaching ministry, Jesus demonstrated a radical faith that wasn't content 
to wait for that final harvest. Rather, Jesus was interested in creating good soil for God's seeds to fall on and to work in amongst the people. As I quoted at the beginning from Scott Jose, the growth and spread of this kingdom is going to extend throughout the world, but it may never exist in a pure state. There will always be wheat. There will always be weeds. How we manage the two matters. We need to recognize the grace that allows the two to exist at the same time and to intermingle. And that grace comes from God. And that grace allows for the opportunity of redemption. We are all keen to uproot and remove the dandelions which so easily spread and infest our lawns. But they are the first fruits of a host of beneficial insects which keep our ecosystem working and in balance. Also, the dandelion is part of the daisy family. Perhaps we simply need eyes to see and ears to listen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is the church's one foundation. Friends, let's come before God once again in prayer. Let us pray. God, who is full of kindness and love, hear our prayers for the world, for one another, and for ourselves. For this congregation and for the church around the world, that we may be faithful and courageous in the face of all challenges that arise day by day. For mercy, justice, understanding, and peace in relationships with one another and between nations, that in this time of anxiety about the future, there will still be generosity for all who are in need. For those who work in fields and forests, in mines and offices, in hospitals, schools, and shops, and for those who cannot find work, that as the economy is reorganized, all who do work will be fairly treated, and those seeking work will not lose hope. For those who travel by land, air, and on water, and for those on vacation taking time to explore your creation, that as we recover from the pandemic, we will remember to cherish the earth and treat it wisely. For those who are teachers and students, for schools, colleges, and universities, who plan for a new season of learning in challenging times, that creativity and commitment will lead to discoveries about the world you love 
and the truth rooted in your wisdom. For all those in danger and need, for the sick and the dying, the poor and the oppressed, for those standing up against injustice, and for all still at risk from COVID-19. For those who are closest to us, for friendships which have stood the test of many years, and for those who love us enough to tell us the truth about ourselves, that they may know our love and appreciation. All these prayers we lift to you, and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, as you go about your day today, make sure that the soil is good, that as the wheat and as the weeds grow together, you have the grace to discern the difference, the grace to offer space, time, and reconciliation for all whom you might walk and whom you might meet. For we have all been weeds in our lives, just as we have all been wheat at various times in our lives. And we are called by God to offer grace, to offer love, and to offer mercy to all whom we meet. And now may the grace of God, greater than our understanding, the strength of Christ, stronger than our need, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, be with each of you on this day and forever. Amen.